What if I told you that the modern FPV drones are not a coincidence, that their appearance on the market about 15 years ago was driven by a series of important technological breakthroughs? Without this, multi-rotors, especially the FPV drones, would not exist. <laughs> Are you serious? Multirotors and especially FPV drones emerged then less two decades ago and took the world by storm, if only for a short period. Who remembers when Arab Sheikh hosted a grand drone tournament or that the DJI Phantom is only 12 years old? Yeah, it feels like yesterday. But if you look at the basic concept of the multi-rotor drone, it seems to be a very simple contraption. A carbon fiber, plastic, metal or wooden frame. Four small motors, plastic props and a battery on top. Sure, add a camera and a transmitter to make it a full-blown FPV masterpiece. So why did we have to wait until around 2010 for the first models to build and a few more years for them to hit the commercial market? Essentially, the issue is a complex engineering and mathematical challenge. How to make something inherently unable to fly actually fly? I'm serious. Drones don't want to fly. No way. What they want is to crash and destroy themselves. They are inherently unstable. And if left without constant attitude correction for even a fraction of the second, they will do crazy things. Unlike airplanes and to some extent even helicopters, there is nothing in the airframe or structure that would dampen any physical disturbance. They are not auto-correcting and there is no negative feedback loop to stabilize them. And if there is nothing built into an airframe, frame, you need an external control mechanism. Enter the flight controller and gyroscope. The first breakthrough that made drones possible was access to cheap and reliable microcontrollers and gyroscopes. For the first part, it was Arduino that brought cheap microcontroller to the masses. You could develop and flash code without fancy programmers over USB and in the relatively user-friendly, okay, Arduino IDE is not user-friendly, environment and in the C programming language. After all, even the clunky Arduino IDE is better than working with assembler mnemonics. And if you doubt Arduino's power, consider this. ArduPilot started as an Arduino project, as did Betaflight great-grandfather Multiwi. Disclaimer. Experimental multi-rotors existed before that. There are known research platforms like the X4 Flyer 2 from the early 2000s that almost look like modern quads. Maybe not fully, as the X4 was a tether design, but close enough. However, it's hard to call them drones for the masses. It's also interesting to know how the first gyros were sourced. If you think that you can just order an MPU 6000 from Mauser, think again. In the beginning, MultiWi used the Invensense IDG600 from the MultiWi Motion Plus and the accelerometer from the Wii Nunchuck. One might even say that Nintendo is responsible for the drone revolution. The second breakthrough that kickstarted the FPV revolution was as important as Arduino and Nintendo, maybe even more so. I'm talking about lithium ion batteries. If I had to describe multirotors with one word regarding power efficiency, it would be they are not. Okay, that's three words, not one, but I think you still get my drift. Before lithium batteries, we had nickel metal hydride ones, and they sucked. Three times lower voltage per cell, half or less the energy density, 10 times more self-discharge, longer charging and lower discharge current. Power loops or FPV racing with wimpy nickel metal? <laughs> I don't think so. And don't forget about one more technological breakthrough that happened at the same time. Brushless 
ESCs became affordable. The reason we fly brushless is not because brushless motor got cheaper or were freshly developed. It's the ESC. Or rather the lack of cheap and somewhat reliable ESCs that was holding back the adaption of the brushless motors. Not the other way around. Brushless motors are not only better than brushed one, they are also less complicated and cheaper. After all, the lack of the commutator and brushes is a simplification. We shouldn't be talking about FPV drones without FPV. And once again, drones at first without FPV appeared just as cheap and reliable cameras and video transmitters hit the market. I think drones were just lucky. Once again, multi-rotors adapted something already existing in the market just as it was becoming cheaper and utilized it to create something new. Long live Synergy. Synergy we salute you. Analog FPV is just analog CCTV systems that got smaller and cheaper. Just some elements picked directly from a shelf and repackaged slightly. But all of that would be absolutely nothing without a single change that happened a few years before. Yes, I'm talking about you, Spectrum. It was 2004 when Spectrum introduced the first digital frequency hopping 2.4 GHz radio system. And it was huge. Before that, 27 and 72 MHz analog radios worked on the single frequency. If someone turned their radio on near you and its base frequency was too close to yours, well, too bad fail safe and crash. High speed frequency hopping radios change the game. From now on dozens of pilots, in theory, could fly at the same time and in the same spot. Hustle free flying with friends and racing events. Here we go! That's why FPV drones are not a coincidence or the creation of a single genius. All of these things needed to happen just before someone put two and two together with a sprinkle of genius on top and multi-rotor drones came to be. I'm Paweł Spechalski. This was the FPV University. Thank you very much for watching and, like always, happy flying! I think this prompter thing is actually an awesome idea. I wonder how I was able to record videos for so long without one. Man, it's almost a game changer. Awesome!